September 24, 2021, Joshua Barboa was laying awake at 3 a.m. unable to sleep. His fiancée, Jessica Pereira, had died eight years prior from a rare liver disease, and Joshua hasn't been able to get over her death. Earlier that month, Joshua had discovered a website by the name of Project December, which used GPT-3's large language model to enable the creation of chatbots. Some bots were already made and available to chat with on the website, while the user also had the option to create custom chatbots themselves. Desperate and curious, Joshua accessed the site and chose the custom option. He fed the AI texts and chats of his late fiance so that it could learn how to talk like her and started chatting away. Joshua was able to readily converse with the digital simulacrum of his late fiance and even spent over 10 hours chatting to it that first night. As the conversations progressed, the flaws in the chatbot became more apparent, but Joshua ignored them. He talked to the bot about how his life has been without her, about all that happened while she was gone, and everything he felt like he had wanted to tell her while she was gone but couldn't. Joshua was pretty convinced with the replies, claiming that the bot talked exactly like her. This exercise provided some much-needed closure for Joshua. Unfortunately for him, this could not go on forever, and Project December was scrapped altogether later on. But not without Joshua's story inspiring brand new AI ventures. Applications like StoryFile and Hereafter.ai were developed. StoryFile utilizes high-tech videos usually taken at studios, while the subjects are still alive. The video is taken from several angles as they answer questions about their life and experiences, which is then made into an interactive video using artificial intelligence, which can answer questions posed to it as if in a regular video call. This has been used in a couple of funerals with much success so far. Hereafter works in a similar way with the app serving as a digital audio diary for a person who records personal stories, memories and anecdotes, and answers questions posed by the system throughout their lifetime. The system then saves all these for future use. After the user is long gone, their loved ones can listen to their memories and experiences by interacting with the application and posing questions to it. Even Amazon has dipped its fingers in the realm of digital necromancy, with a future update promising the ability to have Alexa able to imitate the voices of the dead. According to Amazon, a simple one-minute voice recording can be used to create an AI voice based on the voice of a dead relative or loved one that Alexa can then imitate. While some people view the concept of digital necromancy or reviving the dead ones through digital means as just an extension of our natural grieving practices, much like going through albums of photos or videos of a person after they had died, this is obviously not the case, since these digital ghosts are far more interactive than pre-recorded media. As thus, a grieving person might become dependent on such means. Other fears include the fact that due to AI technology being far from perfect, the digital simulations of dead people might act or say stuff that their real-life counterparts would never have said, posthumously ruining their image. In 2018, scientists at UCLA were able to successfully transplant memories from one snail to another. In the experiment, sea snails from the genus Appalachia californica were used. Due to the relatively simple nervous system, which still maintains some similarities to that of humans. In the experiment, snails were trained by being given a series of mild electric shocks to their tails. These shocks caused them to retract their siphons after any subsequent contact in preparation for an oncoming shock. Untrained snails would only retract their tails for one second after simple contact, as they were not expecting the same shocks as trained or sensitized snails. When scientists injected RNA from the nervous system of trained snails into untrained ones, 
The untrained ones showed the same behaviors displayed in trained snails. The untrained snails would retract their siphons for longer periods upon contact, despite having not previously endured any electric shocks. This is not the only time scientists were able to manipulate snail memories. Since in an earlier study, scientists were able to successfully erase certain memories from a snail's nervous system by weakening synaptic connections between the neurons by blocking certain molecules. Scientists are optimistic that this research could prove beneficial in erasing or modifying certain memories in those suffering from PTSD or trauma. While memory transfer might also prove beneficial in understanding and thus restoring memories from those suffering from Alzheimer's and dementia. Although much more research needs to be done on more complex animals before this can be possible in humans. These experiments bring us one step closer to selective memory erasure in humans, similar to movies like Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind. They can also be used for implantation of fake memories and overall memory manipulation that can be abused for nefarious purposes. British engineer Kevin Warwick has managed to create a robot that's controlled by a rat brain. While not exactly a complete brain, a network of cultured rat neurons is placed on a chip and is used as input for a robot that is able to move around its surroundings on two wheels. The robot uses sonar to read its environment and send the signals back to the rat neurons. The rat neurons then send back the relative feedback and the more the robot explores its environment, the more the neurons learn and adapt, forging new connections and becoming better in navigating their physical environments. Warwick claims that this technology could one day prove beneficial in creating true machine learning models using culture neurons that are able to adapt and learn efficiently. The problem with this machine is that culture neurons have an incredibly short lifespan with each batch of neurons displaying different behaviors in the robot. In a similar experiment, scientists have digitally uploaded a worm's mind into a Lego robot. In what is called the Open Worm Project, all the connections in a worm's 302 neurons were mapped before being used to digitally simulate a worm's brain. This virtual map of its nervous system was then uploaded to a Lego robot, which according to the scientists on the project, behaved and moved exactly like a worm would. Although it was easy to recreate a worm's nervous system digitally, due to its incredibly simple nervous system, scientists hope to one day be able to fully map all the connections in the human brain and recreate it digitally. This would help to revolutionize artificial intelligence while also giving humans the ability to digitally upload or back up their brains and personalities effectively making us immortal.